Economy Parking Station. This train is bound for the main terminal station. With a little good fortune and luck, my family and I managed to avoid a disastrous vacation caused by a passing hurricane, and we had a very nice time here in Tampa, which I would argue is better than where I'm about to head, that being Fort Lauderdale on the eastern side of Florida. Of course, as the title suggests, Southwest Airlines will be carrying me and my family over there today aboard their 737-700. Since this was a vacation, obviously I took some more clothes, which means I had to check a bag in. No matter how short or long the route is, whether domestic or international, there are always two free check bags for every ticket type on the Love Airline, something I sincerely hope they never change. All gates here at TPA are accessed from the level above check-in, so once we escalated up here, followed the signs for Airside C, we then waited for yet another tram ride. For our short flight across the state, we decided to get some food at a local shop here in the Seagates. And well, to put it lightly, we had some trouble. Or rather, the restaurant had some trouble with their oven, so a barely warm panini sub it was. Like FLL, Southwest also has a big operation here at TPA, this concourse being their home. They share Airside C with Breeze, Avello, Sun Country, and Alaska, but they are by far the largest at this terminal and at this airport in general. Our aircraft this evening, N950WN, eventually found its way to our gate at the time of filming an 11-year-old Boeing 737-700, the smallest aircraft type in Southwest Fleet, and right on time, the boarding process started up in their typical A, B, and C group fashion. Me having B-16, I thought I'd be okay to grab a window on board, but let's see. Thank you. Getting a little stuffy in here? I think I'll go as far back as I can to avoid that lovely lady section. 22A should do. I'm sure most of you have flown Southwest before, or at least have seen one of my reviews on in the past, so I'll make this seat tour very quick. There's a safety card down below in a small seat back pocket. Up above is a tray table, of course, and that'd be it, aside from this lovely cabin shot, with Boeing's smaller 737 overhead bins, about to get filled up here soon, as this will be a full flight. The seat has a recline feature, controllable from the armrest, and padding is okay. It's a pretty generic design that Southwest has now updated for the better on their newer aircraft. Lastly, let me open this window here, cause we'll be pushing back soon for Fort Lauderdale, and like I said, we do have a packed plane today, so all the overhead space is filled up.
as this is only a 38 minute flight, the plane being full, and frankly the 1FA being a lazy power hungry snitch, there will not be a service today on this ride, but if there was, here is the tray table very decently sized and extendable. Our cruising altitude on this hop across Florida will only be 25,000 feet, flying over mainly nothing but wetlands and everglades, dodging thunderstorm clouds until we hit the 305. Only civilization being the Punta Gorda slash Fort Myers area as we flew straight down along the west coast for a while. Flights like this don't really offer much in terms of anything, especially on Southwest with the way they board. It truly feels like an air shuttle, which is honestly exactly what it is. As usual though, on Southwest Airlines, there is Wi-Fi and free entertainment accessed on any mobile device by clicking Southwest Wi-Fi in settings. Once on the homepage, you can see where you are in the world or in this state by tapping the time to destination bar up top. That'll redirect you to this flight map, which works throughout the flight from takeoff to touchdown and also comes with some info at the bottom. Southwest drink menu can also be found on here if they were gonna serve it, but I do have to note that the one I'm currently showing is outdated as their full menu is back in 2022. Another nice thing of Southwest is that texting's free Movies and TV shows are in abundance, and there is also free live TV, music, and audio playlists. Wi-Fi is not, but it's always 8 bucks on every route, unless you're an A-list preferred member, then that's also free. As you can guess, we are on our final approach already into FLL, in fact we started that a while ago, so time to touch down here in the east. Yeah, Solo dices una vez más, yeah Que los otros la tratan mal, yeah, yeah, yeah En mis hombros, baby, tú lloras Pero en la noche pones tus piernas Sé que no soy un amigo más Y me decía si así me tienes cerca All in all, everything about this flight was exactly what I expected from Southwest Airlines considering the route duration and besides one jackass, I think they delivered. I think it's also always very cool to fly within a state and with Florida being so large and populated, meaning lots of airports spread everywhere, there's a lot of opportunities for those interstate flights here and today I flew between its two largest metro areas. Obviously, you guys probably saw when I checked in, this is not my final destination. It is Pittsburgh, and that flight will be very cool as I try something new on Southwest Airlines. Something which I did not expect to happen, but was very pleasantly surprised. So I think that will do it for this video here from Fort Lauderdale Hollywood International Airport. I thank you guys for watching this short hop, hope you enjoyed, and catch you on the next one.